Thank you so much for yesterday's warm welcome to Andhra Pradesh and to Vijayawada. You know, I know what, what a lot of you are, are thinking. Ye go to Hindi, my bad kar sakte hai, kya? Ha, bilkul mein Hindi mein baat kar sakte hoon. Lekin hum log Andhra Pradesh mein hai na? Andhra Pradesh mein sab log Telugu mein baat karte hai? Na peru France? Nenu USA, Nundi Unanu. So I've gotten the chance to speak about UA at across India and, and across the world, and I've got to say that from what I saw yesterday, uh, you guys are one of the warmest and most enthusiastic groups of young people that I've had the chance to talk to. So, Danya Vadalu. This, this January, this month, is actually the 10th anniversary of us starting UA. So I'm really happy to be here with you to, to share that. Twelve years ago, I moved from my home state of Minnesota in the U.S. to Gurgaon, India. I was, really, I was really curious about life and work in India. And I went to work at the Confederation of Indian Industry. And I went to work with business leaders who were teaming up with NGOs to try to do something big in poverty alleviation. But after a year and a half of wearing a suit and tie and in 45 degree weather, I decided to leave office life behind and go on a little bit bigger adventure. So I wound up out in Jharkhand, where I was working for a local NGO. And I pretty quickly uh, traded in the car and driver for a Royal Enfield. Some of you also probably have those. I moved out of the Ranchi Gymkhana Club into a mud house in a village and felt like I was really off in a, on an adventure. And I started kicking a football around with a group of, of local boys in the village. But I couldn't help but notice that the lives of the boys and the girls were so vastly different. I saw that in the villages, well, especially in, in the region where I'm working, well, boys play, girls work. It seemed like girls were always doing something in the service of their own families. But I also learned that in Jarkin, six out of ten girls drop out of school and become child brides. So I thought, you know, I'm here even for a, a short time. I should try to do something, uh, you know, even if, even if it's a bit small, to try to help out. So I started teaching English at a local government school in my free time. Um, and along with a friend, I thought maybe we can send a couple of these kids to a slightly better school. So we created a scholarship fund uh, from our own pockets for five girls and three boys. And we also saw that a lot of the kids in the, in the government school had pretty tattered outfits. So we decided we were going to, uh, to buy uh, uniforms for, for all those kids. But after four months of being in Jarkand, I decided to moved back to the U.S. I moved to New York where I had friends and family. I wanted to be a little bit closer to people. And I had a job waiting for me with my favorite professor from college. So it seemed like I was going to be going towards a, a little bit more normal life back in the U.S. But after five, year, five months in, in New York, I decided well, I'm looking for adventure again. I'm going back to Jarkand. So it was then that everything changed for me. First, I realized that our scholarship fund was a complete failure. The boys who were going to a little bit better school were not able to cope. And the girls actually weren't going to school every day uh, to begin with. So the girls were more missing 40 to 50 days of school a year. But one of the girls on our scholarship had the great idea of playing football. So I said, great. You know, I never played football a day of my life. I played ice hockey. I was a ski coach. But I said, okay, if you, if you come up with a, a team, I'll coach it. We made a tournament for girls, and more than 100 girls showed up. And the very next day, we made a tournament for, for boys, and not a single boy showed up except for the organizers. So I thought, okay, the girls are really interested. Let's focus on the girls. What I didn't realize back then and what would have completely frightened me uh, if I were to have, to have known was that 10 years later, I'd still be living in rural Jarkand. I also didn't imagine that 
from one team of girls practicing every day, we would move on now to have more than 400 girls on 20 teams being coached by 30 girls and five boys who've come up through our program. And I didn't realize that I would get to see the girls of UA become youth icons. Thank you very much. The, the girls of UA are actually the very first football teams from India, boys or girls, to have gone to the biggest tournaments in North America and in Spain. They're the, they're the first coaches ever from India, in fact, to have been trained by a Spanish professional team. They've gone to programs at the, they've gone as visitors to the Women's World Cup and to the Men's World Cup. They've gone on expeditions in Alaska and in Jordan. But what's, what really, I think, impresses me and, and everybody else about the girls of you is that beyond their, their big and, and kind of visible accomplishments is that they stand out as proof that if you educate one girl, she'll educate many others. The girls of, of UA are, to me, inspiring every single day because their positivity, their, their sincerity, their unity, uh, their hunger to learn is something really unlike uh, what I had ever seen with groups of kids that I worked with uh, back in my home country. They're also proof that even graduates from the top universities in India and also from abroad, that many graduates really want to do something to join a movement changing the world right now. Our teachers in, in UA have included, this is one of them, a PhD from IIM in artificial intelligence, a social activist from Lady Sri Ram College, graduates from St. Stephen's, from Ashoka University, from Cambridge, Harvard, Yale, Boston College, uh, and many others. They've included older folks who've given up jobs in the corporate world to become teachers. The girls of UA, I think they're, they're also proof that if you want to do something to change the world, you really have to start with girls. If you want to combat poverty, educate girls. If you want to combat climate change, the sixth most powerful, impactful thing that you can do out of the 80 most impactful things is to educate girls. If you want to combat human trafficking, child marriage, illiteracy, educate girls. And happily for, for all of you in India, even if you do it in just one state in India, you'll make a big splash. Here's proof. The, in blue are all the countries of the world that have a lower population than Uttar Pradesh. So you don't even have to work in a lot of different countries. But to educate girls, it takes a team. So to all of you at TEDx, VFSTR, all of you here today, to our next speakers, father and mother, to our teachers, counselors, our bus drivers, our volunteers, and everybody else, I would like to say thank you very much, Dani Vadalu. And to introduce our next speaker, this is of Rima, a really extraordinary young woman from our program who's coaching and, and leading programs and one of our ninth grade students. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Rima, and I come from a village in Jharkhand. It's not easy to live a life in the villages here. Our houses are made of mud and brick. Most of the time, in rainy season, water enters the houses and beds get wet. Our parents are not engineers and doctors. Laborers work every single day. No holidays. Still, they can't feed nutritious food to their children. One time, I had a old lady staying all alone and she died due to lack of food. But when I was 11 years old, in 2012, my father was sick and could not walk. Some nights, I had to sleep on an empty stomach. 
My mother could not work because women were not accepted as labourer. If a person gets sick, he or she can't get the treatment in government hospital, in good hospital. A girl from my village who was 14 years old and had malaria, she wanted to be a doctor so that she could treat her mom. But unfortunately, her parents could not afford to take her to see a doctor and she died. Sometimes when we visit government hospitals, we don't have medicines, doctor, then where to go? Does this mean to lose our lives? A girl who could develop the country, she died. When most of the time, in village, people send their children to the government school. Teachers don't come on some days or they sleep in class. Education which should be provided is not given. But midday meal is provided. People don't care about their studies. People are happy because they don't have to think about midday meal, lunch for their children. Those children study till 10th and go back to the village to work. My name is Reema. I'm a girl in my village in Jharkhand. When a baby girl comes in this world, the families go down. Six, 16 years ago, my mom gave me birth in this world. Everyone's mom wants their daughter to live a life of happiness. Isn't it true? But unfortunately, when a baby girl comes out from her mother's stomach in rural Jharkhand, the first thing which comes in the parent's mind is marriage. Is this for what a girl has been born? No, right. When I hear that girls are a burden all the time, my uncle got married in 2016. His wife left him because he was not doing anything. He was unemployed. He got married a second time just 20 days ago. And the girl's parents had to pay 2 lakh kitchen things like washing machine, bed as a dowry. I hear that girls are a burden, but women do all the housework, all the work at the field. Men drink alcohol and hit their wives. Their wives are like servants. Those women have to just obey what their husband says. If those women speak even a word against their husband, they are beaten, dragged out from their houses, and they are abused verbally, physically, emotionally, and sexually. Those women are so injured that they can't walk, speak, or even able to eat. What a life, right? Thinking of people in my village, in rural Jharkhand, is totally different. Girls are being suppressed in the community, in my villages. Girl can't wear a jeans, can't have a phone with her, or can't go to a shop even if she needs to buy a sanitary pad. Girls live their life in a fear of being harassed by a boy or raped. Girls live their lives like in a cage. My own sister was all alone at home. One boy entered the house and tried to do bad touches. She yelled at him and called the villagers. My parents went to his home 
to tell what he had done but the boy's parents supported him people support boys they don't see whose fault is there they just blame a girl even if there is a fault of a boy the great father of the boy said we should keep it secret she will be in danger nobody will marry her my father who is sitting there said we can't fight because we are poor my sister is 14 years old now and when a girl turned 14 in the villages people start look for a groom child marriage is normal my relative jaso got married at 14 years old gave her first birth at 16 second birth at 18 she became a widow at 22 she was kicked out of her in-laws house with two young children what an easy life what a happy life for her the woman who was a girl had a dream to do something in her life it just vanished like magic her life changed in a second for her if we see my village in the past it will it is the same as we see now if we see my village in the future it will be the same as we see now my name is reema i am a girl in my village in jharkhand i am a student in ui school i study in ninth grade a football player and a coach of 44 young girls and a coach of a team when i was 10 years old i started playing football just after 2 years i went to meet sunil chhetri the indian football captain in 2015 i went to spain to play in the donosti cup in 2018 i went a second time to meet marcelo the captain of real madrid in 2015 i gave my first speech in spain in front of the government officials right now in 2019 i am giving for the first time ted talk in front of you guys i am a girl from the same village the obstacle which i told you about i am the same girl and the same village but i am independent right now i coach a team i pay my school fee by myself and my sisters as well us girl we need a support now if everyone in the room speak even one sentence of you are it gives us courage to fight back from our obstacles if we see my village in the past it will be the same as we see now but after getting your support if we see my village in the future it will be different it will be better so i want to send a message to each and every girl to speak for herself to stand up and fight back and i hope and i wish i'll be the inspirational girl and makes others to go for it thank you